Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guests today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. A fun episode today lined up. Every now and then we get these, the success stories, the people who have been there, done that, and I love it. I love unpacking the stories of what worked, what didn't, what did we learn, and what successes did we have along the way. So I have an amazing guest for us lined up. His name is John Papaloni, serial entrepreneur, built eight-figure businesses, Let's not go any further. John, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I, I am excited to be here too. And full transparency for the audience. Uh, the topic that John put in on the application form was surprise me. So I have no idea where this conversation is going. He doesn't either. And we're just going to unpack it and see what happens. So uh, John, thanks for being open and transparent. You've Absolute been pleasure. I love it. it. That's fantastic. So you, you've been an entrepreneur. You've been in business. You've, you've done a lot of different things. I'm, I'm always curious to hear what got you into entrepreneurship in the first place. Well, some would say I have trouble getting along with people, but I don't really agree with that. And uh, <laughs> no, you know what? I'm one of those guys that uh, my mind wanders everywhere. I'm constantly looking at different things, finding different passions. And I'm a curious guy by nature. Like I don't even have to try, which is why I can go by titles of surprise me and get away with it because <laughs> it's just natural curiosity that takes it. So and, and that's the thing, right? So I had goals and missions and by chasing after them, it, the conventional route doesn't always work or it takes too long for me. So I've always been uh, that go-getter, that go-chaser. And uh, I've been called, a, you know, too aggressive growing up. And that was fine. I mean, I didn't care. At the time, I tried to figure out what they meant. I just wanted to get things done. So how's that being too aggressive? But compared to the normal standards, apparently trying to get things done quickly was aggressive. So that's where I started. That makes sense. And that's probably common of a lot of entrepreneurs that, you know, we, we want to try different things. We, we don't want to be chained down to one thing. And we just, we love all of it. And there's not, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's where the world's greatest discoveries come from, right? Just, just Absolutely. wondering like what, what could happen if we do this? Um, so, all right. So you've been in a number of different industries though. And what I find most interesting about that is you'll get two paths for the serial entrepreneurs, right? It, it's the, the person who does one thing really well and they just do it a number of different times and they, they iterate maybe here and there and then you have the people like yourself who are just like so far across the board it's like how did you connect those dots and, and how did you follow that path so for you give well before i dive into the question give us a sense of the different industries uh and businesses that you've had ah yeah let, let's get into that because i've been into uh different businesses marketing media radio nightclub industry as well as djing and uh real estate uh mortgages as well as coaching so i mean you can see what i mean listening like those those things are so far spread out they're all over the place and i'm curious like when you're growing those businesses You've, you've obviously had success across the board, more success in some than others, but still success. And you've, you've gotten to this point. What are some things that you've found are commonalities that are just like truths in growing a business that you now take with you in everything you do? Uh, passion, passion. Yeah, I have to be interested in what you're doing. And I'm going to go deeper than that because everyone says passion and as if that's the only answer. No, no, you can love something and it still doesn't work. And what I mean by passion is you got to be really focused in on the parts of the business you love. Like, for example, I don't like admin work, so you'll never catch me doing it. I mean, we're in tax season and I'm like a month behind. Why? Because I just can't be bothered. And it's not that I can't be bothered because I don't feel it's important. I can't be bothered because I have trouble focusing on it. And so, and that's kind of sort of where evolution takes you as well. And that's sort of how you switch to different industries. It's evolution. And you have to be able to be self-aware and and passion in what you're doing so do what you love do what pays the best and what i mean by that is if your top job the job that you do just say on average pays 300 dollars an hour and the job you want to do that you don't really like doing but needs to be done you can get something for 20 dollars an hour get them for 20 dollars an hour because the more you spend on that 20 dollars an hour job 
the less you're spending on what you actually like doing and the more deterred you're going to be and the less progressive you're going to be. And then therefore your results will show that the more that other people are doing the stuff that you can't concentrate or focus on, they get done. They're important. They need to be done. You focus on what you're best at and you become the best at it. And then you also have to realize when you've tapped out because that's important as well. Mm. I'm curious about the passion thing though, because I mean, a lot of people go into to business because they're passionate about it and then they find themselves hating it after a while. So like, what's, what's the balance of loving something and then you, you want to hate it after a couple of years and loving something and focusing so solely on that one task because you're really good at it and outsourcing the rest. How, how do you get to that point? Well, here's the key thing here, right? Like if you're, look, the passion, the reason people give up is because they're chasing passion because they think it's easy. And mm. what happens is they start hating it because they realize they're really not that good at it. Not as good as they thought. They bum, and sometimes you fall into comparison games where you're comparing your competition, or they're better at it, and then you become discouraged. Reality is your only competition is what you did yesterday. Forget everybody else. And where it's important is that you may not be the best at it. And if it's real passion, you'll want to learn and you want to grow. And if you don't want to learn and you'd rather give up because it's too hard, then the reality is that's not your passion. You, you, you fell in love with the lifestyle or the idea of what that lifestyle can bring you. You didn't fall in love with what you're actually doing. And that's where the difference is. Yeah, that's that's a big mindset shift, too, because I, I think that's the piece that gets us. And it comes from, I would assume, childhood where... A lot of people tell us, you know, you're you're good at this one thing. You should you should chase your dreams. You should do that thing, go into business, whatever that may be. And we don't really get outside of our own little bubble of saying, you know, I, I might not be the best at this or I could have there's room for growth. And when you get into the real world, whether you're an employee at a job or you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, and then you start to realize like, oh, there's I need to do some growth. But the kind of the trap is like we all have to grow all the time. So yeah. that's, that's where we get stuck is thinking that we're good enough. We're all good enough as individuals, but at what you're doing, there's always that next level. Yeah. Well, look, simple, simply put, you're good enough to start, but you need to learn more to be better mm. and to continue. Yeah, no, that's a powerful lesson. So I want to, I want to kind of unpack how you grew uh, an eight figure business and sold it because not, not many people can do that. Um, then I think the percentage of businesses that get to eight figures in revenue is, is less than like a half a percent. It, it's some crazy stat. You've been there, you grew it, you sold it. Now you're on the backside. I want to unpack that journey. First of all, what, what business was that, that got to eight figures? It was my uh, print and marketing business. Uh, it was an agency. Okay. And it was my second round just, uh, you know, so everyone knows, you know, to prove my point about how hard it is. My first round, I ended up in bankruptcy. Mm. So I was just stupid or crazy, whichever one you want to call it, to try it again. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with trying again, because I assume you learned a lot in the first time. And that's 100%, the only reason you tried 100%. again. Yeah. The first time it was led by ego. And that's the uh, the second time it was humility. Yeah. No, that's uh, we should never lead with ego. It's always going to always gonna end poorly. But all right, so you started this business the second time. What were, what were some of those things that you learned the first time, though? I'm curious because I, I would assume a lot of people need to learn those lessons. Well, one thing is you're not going to build business overnight. And the ability to keep your current customers happy and ordering over and over and over and again over finding new business is actually way more important than new business. And new business is important, but keeping current customers is more important. Because the cost of acquisition on new business is a lot higher. Keeping people happy is little nuances that keep them happy. People just want to know that they are remembered and not forgotten. And as long as you remember that and you, and you pay attention to their needs, they tend to come back and back and back. And my business came, you know, grew because of repeat orders. Eventually, you had an, I had enough people repeating that I had consistent work. I, I could predict my weekly income without even knowing what what came in. It was very simple. Um, and again, I rarely lost customers. 
Not to say that I didn't because it happens to all of us, but I rarely lost. And most of the people I lost, it wasn't to competition. I lost them because either they went out of business for whatever reason, or I told them I didn't want their business. I chose. I chose my business. I chose who I wanted or didn't want. And I didn't, what I mean by don't want, let's be clear, you can't choose business. But if someone is trying to push you down on price, as an example, and you have to sell, uh, you know, sell it for a loss, at some point in time, you got to realize it's just not worth it. Let them go. Because you're going to keep losing. every time. If, if you're losing money every time they call, sometimes it's better when they don't call. Eventually, they come back if your service was right. So everyone needs to try things and everyone needs to develop their own path. And sometimes you just got to let them go. Yeah, it's hard for most people, especially when you're newer in business, to say no and, and to turn down business, whether it's you're in a product or service business, because you you think every every dollar is a good dollar. It's really not. No. <laughs> I learned that the hard way, too. It's like when you say no to those people and then something inside you just like eats it away at you and like, why did I do that? Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty hard to work for those people as clients. Right. Uh, now, what I want to touch upon here and going how I built those repeat customers, I think this is a key fundamental thing Yeah, please. because we all start start businesses thinking. And I ask everybody in the beginning, who is your target market? And the answer is always everybody. And that's the sheer way of failing. It sounds like, wait a minute, I'm going to choose business. Yes, you are. And I don't mean that you're going to say no to people because just say I service car salespeople. And all of a sudden, somebody calls me from a hotel business. I'm not going to say no to them. It's business. But all my marketing and my focus and direction is going to be towards my niche. Whoever else I get is added bonus. And where it's relevant here is, I'll give you an example. My second round, the first time round when I went bankrupt, I was targeting everybody and anybody. I just happened to be lucky and I landed in one of those Fortune 1000 companies that pretty much paved the way. Mm. And, um, and that's where the ego developed. But... The second time around, it wasn't so easy. And how I built that is I found a niche. I looked at it and said, what do people not want to do that I'm okay with doing? Wholesaling was it. Prime example, printing presses. They do not want to print their business cards or postcards. It sounds great when you're going there and saying, I'm going to bring them 5,000 postcards or 20,000 postcards. To you, that's a big deal. You go to that print shop that has $100,000 a month lease payment. He's going, oh, God, this is so small. I don't know if I'm going to make money on this. They don't actually want it. But why do they do it? Because sometimes they're lucky and they can group it with other people's job and make profit. Sometimes you have a big job on the way. And if they say no to the small job, you won't bring the big job. So they just put up with it. So I, I realized that was a pain point. So what did I do? Wholesaling. You print your big magazines, your $2 million orders, your $200,000 orders. I don't want those. All Get your jobs that are like your business cards that are 50 bucks, 100 bucks. I'll take your postcards that are $200. I'll take all that. And I did what's called a gang run, which is a big sheet. And just say, I'm going to use business cards for the math wise. You can fit 60 business cards on this big sheet, $50 a piece. That's $3,000. The cost to print it was $1,450. Do the math on that. That's $1,550 per order. Now, as you start fulfilling it, now people realize, and say, you know, they talk, people talk to each other and say, yeah, man, this is a pain in the body. It goes, not for me. How are you doing it? I'm sending it to this guy. Look what he charges. How does he do it? I don't know, but he, he does it. So now they're referring people to me. Promote, you know, my advertising is getting people to me. Next thing you know, I do one sheet, two sheets, three runs, four runs, five runs, eventually 25 runs a week. And then, uh, then at that point in time, when you master that part of the business, then you expand. Now you do that. Now you can do direct mail. And now you get involved with Canada Post as an example. Or whoever distributes it, you can do the print part, s send it all shipped and ready to go so you can prepare people's direct mail. Then from the direct mail, you can, uh, I don't know, get into websites, whatever. The point is you build one piece at a time. You become the best at that piece, expand on it, and keep expanding until at some point in time, either you get a good offer to sell, you're fed up and want out, or both. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, both happens a <laughs> lot, and there's nothing wrong with that either. But uh, it's funny. That's what happened in my last business. I was, I got a good offer to sell, and I was fed up. And I said, "Peace, I'm out." Um, and that's not a bad thing because it, that that means you've built something that someone else can run. Uh, it sounds like you did that exactly too at a very big scale, which I want to kind of unpack because it you said something. Oh man, so many people miss it. And I just want to highlight it because it's so important. Do one thing, be really good at it, and then 
you can do the next thing. Everybody, like you said, they want to, they want to do everything. They want to be all things and they want to have 17 product lines from day one. No, do one thing. And then you can start to train employees to do it for you and, and grow. So for you, when you, as you were growing that business, you business cards, direct mail, the examples you gave, what did you, what did you personally have to do in going through those different phases of business? Like, what did you have to learn about yourself in order to scale that business? Because a startup to eight figures is two totally different leaders. So I'm curious about your path. Well, that's the thing, right? It starts off differently. Like when you're at startup, you feel like you have to do everything. I was, I may have learned to focus, but I still tried to be the jack of all trades. And I was good at it, but, but not great at it. And there's a difference. You want to be great at something. So you have to become self-aware and realize what you're great at. And you have to learn to let go. So you can grow by yourself to a certain point. When you start feeling like you're choking, the biggest mistake people make, including myself, is that you're resistant to hiring because now you sort of just spent all this time struggling and now you got a, some sort of an income that you can pay your bills with. You're no longer choking, but to hire somebody, now you're going to start choking again. It's not very motivating, <laughs> but <laughs> you have to realize that you have zero opportunity to grow if you're not willing to sacrifice a little bit longer. Now you got to balance that too. There comes a certain point that you can't just do everything all in the name of growth and you never pay yourself. There, there is that balance, but in the beginning, until you got to the, look, the way I look at it is you sacrifice until you get to the point that uh, you're doing all the stuff that you enjoy or all the stuff that you're great at. And you got somebody else doing the stuff you're not so good at. When you get to that point in time, then you can, uh, rotate and just start paying yourself and uh and build at a different level so that, yeah. that, that but you got to start that's the key thing start and be consistent yeah i mean in the beginning you do you have to be the jack of all trades unless you have some funding somewhere that, then that's unlike most people you right. you have to do that but the the longer you stay in that mindset of jack of all trades or, or just doing all the functions of the business the less likely it is that you'll get out and that's right. where that's where people tend to stop and give up. So, and here's uh, the fundamental to go from six figures to seven figures to eight figures. Yeah. You can grow slowly to six figures. You can even grow like that one person at a time to seven figures. When you get to that seven figures, now you got income. Now's the time to deploy it. And what I mean by that is that it is much easier to go from seven figures to eight figures than it is to go from, uh, from five figures to six figures or six figures to seven figures. Because six figures, you really don't have any real money. Like I have a saying, if you make $100,000 a year, you're broke. Right? Mm -hmm. That's In today's inflation, that's the way it is. Yep. You know, and so my point I'm getting at is the fact that when you're at seven figures, you have real money to play with. Use it. Grow. It is easier. Look, when you do campaigns, and if you're doing a campaign for a small area, it's not much more to expand your campaign to get a bigger area, as an example. Right. Like, look, I'm going to use real estate as an example. It's the easiest way for me to dissect this. So when people start off with real estate investments, they start off with uh, either a condo, single family home. Then they buy two single family homes and three single family homes, yada, yada, yada. Now, if you look at the at the uh, lending rules, you tap out at five homes. So now you're going, how do I expand from that? That's very easy. Because now that five homes, as an example, is equivalent to that million dollars. You've tapped out. As an individual, you cannot build anymore. Now you have to really grow and scale. So how do you do that? You get rid of the five homes. You get rid of that mentality. You get rid of the five homes. You get rid of that small acquisition. You get rid of that. You take the equity from that. And now you go into a sixplex, then a 12plex, a 24plex. Then you go from 24 to 100. Then from 100 to 300 to a unit building. See how, how it grows and it scales? Because you're multiplying it. What happens is from zero figures to 100,000, you're trying to survive and you're begging for an income because you don't want to go get a job from 100,000 to 1 million. You start to, you're still on edge and you start feeling that you're making some sort of, uh, you know, movement. When you get to that million, you got the cash flow. Now it's time to stop adding and multiply instead. Multiply everything you do. Do not add. If you're adding, you're growing too slow. That's a really cool mindset shift that I, I don't think I've heard anybody put it that way, but yeah. How can you, how can you multiply instead of add? That's oh man, that's awesome. If, if you take away nothing else from this episode, take away that. Cause that'll, that'll get you past whatever hump you're experiencing right now. So uh, 
John, this has been fantastic. I'm going to put your website on the screen here. Uh, just ask You can head over there. It's in the show notes as well. If you're wherever you're watching or listening, um, what, what do you want people to do? You have a podcast, you, you do speaking, like how can someone learn more about, about you and how to get out of the rut they're in and, and help you get them unstuck? Absolutely. I mean, I welcome any question anybody has. You can reach out to me, whether it's through the website, whether you go to go to Instagram's gram, send me a DM, send me an email. I mean, hey, you know what? I'm always here to help. I'm always here to uh, pass on information. Um, even my podcast, I uh, focus on educating people. So I do two a week. Sometimes it's an interview, sometimes it's individual. But, you know, I always try to get nuggets that help people when possible. I love it. That's awesome. Wherever you are, if you want to check that out again, it's in the, it's in the show notes in the description down below. And uh, I, I just got one more question before, before we wrap up, I'm curious over the years, as you're growing all these businesses, was there, was there one question or one thought that helped you just get past the mindset you were in, get unstuck or help you solve a problem? Was there one thing that you could think of that someone else can take from this episode and help them get to the next level? Yeah. Um, I learned more from what I look, everyone focuses on what should they do change that mindset and focus on what do you need to stop doing? Mm. You get more from saying no than you do from yes. And, and what I mean is because we only have 24 hours in a day and we got to multiply those hours. And how do we multiply the, those hours? Prime example, you get employees or, or tradesmen or somebody to do the work and that's how you expand those hours. But how do you realize when you hire? Well, by saying, no, I can't do this means you got to get someone else to do it, which means you can take on other stuff. So the more you say no to, the more you can expand, the more you can expand, the more you grow. Just saying that no the first time is the hardest part because it's always the what if. That is true. And that's uh, that's a powerful way to end this episode. So think of what are the things you can say no to? What are the things you can get off your plate and focus on what you're really good at and not kill that passion? Make sure you sustain it for a long time. So John, this has been awesome. Thank you for coming to the show. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, this was awesome. Again, wherever you're watching or listening, make sure you hit the subscribe button so we can keep bringing interviews like this to you every single day of the week. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Launch. Thanks.